Peter the Plunge Repair. We got another one for you. It is a Whirlpool single wall oven. Customer complaint is it is not heating up. Um, what I always do whenever I come to an oven and the customer complaint is it's not heating well, I start the broil and I start the bake and I check both. I make sure both bake and broil are both working or not working. If I find the broil working and the bake is not, I'm looking at either control board or the bake element. If the bake element doesn't work and the broil element doesn't work, I'm looking at this fuse that we are covering in this video today. Um, both bake and broil do not work, so we're going to get into the back of this thing, check out that fuse, and make sure it's good. First thing we got to do is take off these side trim pieces. These cover the screws that hold the oven into the cabinet. Um, one screw on the left, one screw on the right, then you can get those trim pieces off. Now, to get these trim pieces off, um, uh, you gotta lift them up a little bit and pull it out from the bottom, and then you pull it down and she comes off. And yeah, we got it done on the right, we're gonna do the same on the left. And whenever I pull this one down, I do break it a little bit. Um, I did something and somehow it broke off. You'll, you'll see it here in a few. Yeah, that piece there. So that came with it whenever I pull that off. Um, not a big deal though. I put the trim back on at the end of this and it fit pretty good. But anyways, trim pieces are off. We got two Phillips head screws on each side. Um, we pull those out and then we can get the oven out. And this is the fancy tool to pull these ovens out by yourself. If you don't have an oven dolly, if you're a regular guy, you're gonna need some help. Uh, maybe set it on, I don't know, something strong enough to actually hold the weight of this oven. Um, this single wall oven's not that bad. Um, I've set stuff before I got this oven dolly on um, Tupperware boxes and it actually worked pretty good. I've uh, set them on stools before, um, but yeah, these this oven dolly is amazing. If you are a technician or a business owner or something, you guys need this dolly. This will save you some time and it'll save you some money. Um, they are pretty pricey though. Um, I'll even put a link in the description for them below. Um, their website, I'm not affiliated with them or anything. Um, that's just for you guys, just so you guys uh, can get one of these dollies. And they are pretty pricey. I think whenever I bought it, it cost me somewhere around $500 for it. But uh, it's worth it. I can do this all by myself. Don't need the customer's help. And I don't need to hire any muscle either. But uh, anyways, I'm getting this all dolly set up now. Um, how it works is you got these that flat bar across the middle. You put that under the front and then... I call them the little wings on the side. Um, once you get this oven pulled out a little bit um, and it's still resting on the back side, you can swing the wings around and uh, give it some support um, on the back side of it so you can get this whole thing out. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna let you guys watch how I do this. All right, now in a normal situation, this piece of wood would not be underneath um, this oven. The way that this oven was installed, this thing was pretty much connected to the bottom of this. Um, usually it looks like this side where it's just metal. And whenever it's just metal like this, um, you just put those, <laughs> I don't even know how you call those things. You put those things on the bottom of it and it supports the back end of it and then now you can pull this thing out all the way. Um, as you're pulling it out, you want to make sure you have enough uh, slack and stuff for the wiring that comes through the wall. 
Um, if you don't have a dolly like this, um, you want to make sure you're, well, you'll probably have more slack if you set it on the ground because you see that that wiring goes down. But uh, I got more slack by removing that bracket there. And then now we're just going to get this thing maneuvered uh, where I can actually get behind this thing and get that cover off. Alright, now we're behind this oven. We're going to be getting these screws out. Uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I believe there's eight of them here. And the best thing to use is a uh, number two square. Um, it fits these screws perfectly. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about if you're pulling this panel off. Because you'd be like, man, you need a huge Phillips screwdriver to get this thing off. But uh, a yeah, number two square uh, will work very well on these. They hold them very well and they come out pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get these screws out and get this panel off. All right, panel is off. Set that off to the side. And this fuse I'm talking about is right there. Um, it is wired directly to the broil and bake elements. So when this fuse is out, you won't get that second leg of 120. And uh, putting an ohm meter on it. And she is open. You want this closed. And yeah, I got that in the bag. We're going to go ahead and swap that out. But um, yeah, these things are wired up directly to both elements. So these elements, they need 120 on each side to work. So 120 comes from the board, and the other 120 pretty much goes, well, it comes from the board too, on the double line brake relay. Um, but <clears throat> L2 goes through this fuse. So if it gets too hot, say you're doing a self-clean, and next thing you know, your oven um, just doesn't heat anymore. I mean, you still get power or something like that, but it just don't heat. First thing you want to do is look at this fuse. Uh, but yeah, here's the fuse right here. I, I will also have it linked in the description below. So if y'all need it, y'all can go ahead and pick that up. And all it is is just two screws. But uh, yeah, this is easy enough job if you can actually get this oven out. If you can get this oven out, set it on the ground. Um, you may need some help or if you have this oven dolly. Pretty simple job. Um, not as bad as you think. Um, especially these single wall ovens. They're not that heavy. Double wall ovens are... They're pretty, pretty heavy. Uh, this one here, not too bad. Uh, but yeah, we're going to put this new fuse on. And uh, I'll even ohm it out for you to let you know what it looks like on the meter. But once you get that thing on, you can put this thing back together. Yeah, while you're back here too, you can uh, give these elements good ohming. Uh, they should be somewhere around 30 ohms. I mean, sometimes they're 33, sometimes they're 28. Um, this one here, it's 17. Um, that's not bad. So anything from 15 to like 35 is like okay. Um, and as long as they heat too. But that's just if you're curious. Um, yeah, just put your ohm meter up to it and see what see what she see what she reads yeah that was 28 and the one up there was 17 not bad at all um, in the end everything's working spoiler alert well late spoiler alert anyways um, everything's good we're gonna put this panel back on and uh, we're gonna fast forward this so it doesn't take too long 
Uh, but yeah, get this panel on, then we're gonna get it back in the hull and get power back on this thing and we're going to test her out. Yeah, putting this thing back together, um, just remember how you guys take it apart. Uh, if you take out this um, clamp here that holds this wire harness, make sure you put that clamp back in. Just put everything back the way you found it. A little trick for y'all when you're getting these things back in with this oven dolly um, you don't always get it high enough on the back end um, so what I do is I tilt it a little bit forward and push it back at the same time I know it's a terrible angle you can't see it uh, but once you get that back lip um, in the cabinet you can swing those wings out um, and then you can get it back in the rest of the way I mean this oven dolly is the best thing I've ever bought for my business here. Um, best $500 I ever spent because it's probably made me triple that, probably even more. Yeah, probably way more than that. <laughs> I don't remember how many ovens I've worked on by now, but it's been quite a few. I've used it 20 times or so, so it's probably made me, it's made its money back for sure. So it's definitely worth it if you guys are a service company or thinking about getting into this kind of stuff. But yeah, we're gonna get this oven back in um, I'm just gonna let you guys watch this until the end of it.
all right everything's back together trim pieces on powers on um i always like to set the clock for the customer so we're gonna go ahead and do that then we're gonna make sure the uh, bake and roll elements work this is actually the part of the video you saw at the beginning of this video because i failed to get uh, the beginning part of diagnosing this thing but uh, yeah um some ovens you actually need to close this door switch for the bake element to come on and you'll see that here in a few because I'm not feeling any heat right now boom there goes the door switch and then I feel some heat so some of these the door needs to be shut <clears throat> for heat to actually um, reach it anyways uh, bake element works roll element works repair is done so if this has helped you guys I mean give me a like subscribe and uh, I really do appreciate you guys watching. If you got any questions or anything, comment below. I'm getting more and more questions than I ever have before, so I will do my best to get to it. But again, thanks guys.